So let's talk more about functional fitness tests in older adults. And in the main goal is to keep people independent. We'll divide these up and again, we're focusing on activities of daily living because if people cannot do these, they cannot live independent. But we also want to focus on what's called the IADL, so instrumental activities of daily living. So these are, are not necessary to keep people independent, but they're certainly going to be very important in keeping people independent. And of course, balance, you know, as we talked about falls and many older adults are very fearful of having a fall. You know, we want to do these tests for adults who are frail, um, they've been sedentary throughout life, and who are the oldest of the old, so they are older than 85. Although in the past, when I've done the, when I've done the senior fitness test at Westminster Towers, there are some people that are, you know, will really blow you away. The senior fitness test is way too easy for them. They can do a lot more than that. So, you know, once again, to keep in mind, who is the client? You know, some people are, they're going to vary, you know, widely in their abilities to do these tests. So here they are, the ADLs. So this is um, from chapter seven in the older adults text. So you're probably familiar with the ADLs if you've done any type of volunteer work in any type of um, senior complex. So related to grooming, dressing, hygiene, feeding oneself, transferring. So you know these are the the big you know the um, the big ADLs, and then the IADLs again. You being able to travel, being able to cook for themselves being able to actually do their own grocery shopping and to you know do the vacuuming and the dusting and to manage being able to manage taking their medications to be able to pay their bills on time and my mother you know did her checkbook every month to the penny and never used a calculator so she was you know very mentally sharp even all the way till the you know until the very very end that last month before she got um before she when she got sick Exercise testing, I mean, there really is no need just based on age alone. Um, you know, moderate testing, submax testing, we may want to focus on. As you know, increasing age, heart disease is always going to be there, the risk. And there's more risk at higher intensity. So once you start getting over to, you know, 85% and higher, so um, we may want to focus on doing submax testing. Medications can confound the exercise test. You know people could very well be on some type of beta blocker. 77% uh, take at least one medication, and there are many people who take multiple medications. And typically, if we're going to do any type of exercise testing and functional testing, these are going to be submax tests unless the person needs to be referred for a clinical maximal test maybe they have COPD, maybe they have heart disease potentially, so they may need to have a, a graded exercise test on a treadmill with the, um, you know, with ECG monitoring and maybe even gas exchange. But, um, you know, you can modify tests. We'll, we'll do the senior fitness test protocol, but there are things that you can do. If someone has a very low VO2 max, you're not gonna start them out running. You're gonna start them off at a very, very slow walking speed on a treadmill. They're gonna need a longer warm up. Um, you know, you don't want to go a really long duration on a test because that's gonna fatigue them. If you need to take blood pressure, those of you who've done um, XFIS2, you know it is much easier to take blood pressure on the bike than the treadmill or on a step test or an elliptical machine. You know, if people have poor leg strength, they're gonna have difficulty doing a bike test. Uh, can they, you know, if they're uh, slow walking speed, you know, maybe they can't walk any faster, you might have to increase incline rather than the speed. You may not be able to do, um, to use the uh, mouthpiece for VO2 max, so, you know, because of dental issues. Again, vision, they may not see as well, so the bike may be easier for that. And for people who don't hear, that can be a real challenge um, with older adults who have difficulty hearing. You know, if they have to follow a beat of a metronome, that can be very challenging. 
or if there's a lot of background noise in the lab, that can be very challenging for them to hear as well.